beautiful Sunday morning has been given to us again. And we thank God for blessing us to see this another beautiful day. Greetings to you coming to greetings to you in the love the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And it's another lovely opportunity that we have to be alive and to continue to live and enjoy this beautiful world that God has given us to live in. It's my pleasure once more to come to you with the Word of God and I trust as we go through this lesson that we will uh, understand clearly the, 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 um, the, how God has made provision for his family and the plan that he has laid out for us to be included in his family. And as we go through this lesson, I trust that we will see further how important it is to be in the family of God and the price that was paid for our redemption and for us to be adopted into this beautiful family of God. So thank you again for your time and your interest and I trust that this will be a lovely day in all respects for you and that you will have an enjoyable day as you serve the Lord, as you go to fellowship or even if you don't get to go out to fellowship and even through this medium that your spirit will be in tune with God and that you will feel his presence and feel the warmth of his love through his word. So may God bless you and as we continue our studies on the family of God. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this beautiful morning that you have given us. We thank you, dear Lord, for blessing us with another night's rest and bringing us into this lovely day. We pray, dear Lord, that your Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us and help us, dear Lord, to follow as you lead, dear Lord. We know that you will not lead us in any way that is contrary to your divine will for us. So help us to be obedient followers, dear Lord, and that we will understand, dear Lord, how beautiful it is to, to walk in the steps of the Savior. So dear Lord, I pray that you may help us, that we will enjoy this day, and that we will fellowship with you, dear Lord, and fellowship with one another, those of us who will be congregating in, your, in the chapels, dear Lord, that your Holy Spirit will meet with us, and that we may embrace the opportunity and the beautiful spirit that God has descended upon us and will bring glory unto your name, dear Lord. So bless us now as we go into this study. I pray that you use me, take me and guide me, dear Lord, as I do my part to convey your word in Jesus' name. Amen. I would like to also express my condolence to families who has lost loved ones this week. Uh, it is so sad to hear again how you know people are just dying suddenly especially and the sadness that it brings to family, the unexpected sadness that comes with this. So may God sustain you, uh, put your trust in him and he will sustain you as you go through your grief and uh, he will supply their needs and strengthen you. So may God continue to uplift you with his divine spirit. So now let's look at the blood bought family part two. And the aim is to further impress the, the, the students with the price of membership in the family of God. To further explain the price of membership in the family of God. And the 
um, introduction to our lesson read as follows. As members of the blood-bought family, it is necessary that we conduct ourselves in such a way that the father of this family may be respected and adored throughout the earth. He that is a child of God has been born again by the Spirit of God and removed from the family of Satan and added to the family of God. This means an end to the business of sin and holiness and righteousness become the order of the day. Modern Christianity is mixing the world with its, with its religion, re religion. But this will greatly disappoint the professor when he comes to the judgment bar. Therefore, it is most important that we set down the truth here in regard to the conduct of the family. Now, the family of God is very unique. The family of God is special and it is a holy family because God calls us into holiness. Therefore, when one becomes a child of God through repentance of sin and salvation being granted unto them through the blood of Christ and the forgiveness through his grace, and he adopts us into this family, we are in a place where it is going to be a change in the way we live. You cannot con con maintain the same lifestyle, do the same things as you used to do and think you're going to be a part of this family. No. I have a natural family and there are certain rules and guidelines that governs my family and my children especially being you know the young ones in the family and when they came along these rules and guidelines when they were able to understand were taught to them and it is our expectation as parents to see that they carry out these guidelines that were set in place and standards. They cannot just go out there and do any and everything and think it's not going to have some consequence to it. It is going to have consequence. And if they understand, and thank God they did, Sometimes it might not be the most comfortable thing to do in their skin in certain setting of their experiences and the company that they might be in to be different. But they know that there are rules that governs them and therefore they are going to do their best to restrain the, the, the influence and the peer pressure to wanting to go in that different direction. I am not saying that they were all perfect in doing this, but they were taught. The rules were there. And they know if they came home and something was made known to us of them not carrying out or behaving or um, operating in the way that they should operate, that there was going to be consequence for that. I say that to say, God is God. God is holy. God does not sin. God does not accept sin within his kingdom. Therefore, we as children of God 
have to obey the guidelines, the standards, the commands of God. And that should not be so hard to do if we say we love God. But yes, Satan is there and he's going to try to make us feel uncomfortable in doing the right thing. He might make us feel that we are not fitting in. We are old school or whatever, you know, impressions he will come up on us to try to suppress us. But that is his job. And we as Christians have to recognize and realize that we are now not walking in the darkness anymore. We are now children of light. Therefore, when Satan tried to bring us back in those dark places, we have to take a bold stand and continue and call upon God. And that's why the Bible said, draw near unto God and he will draw near unto you, right? Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So we need to understand when these things come our way that we need to draw near to God and resist Satan and he will take his flight. So, uh, our first scripture in our lesson is 1 Peter 1 and 16. A very short scripture, but holds a lot of soundness to it. Why does it read? Because it is written. That means it was established before this reference of it. They're drawing from what was and declaring this is not new. It is written, be ye holy for I am holy, right? Making reference to God. God speaking to his people. It is written, be holy as I am holy, okay? That's what God requires of us, a holiness on her behalf. Uh, yes, there are times when, like I said earlier, Satan attacks us and he might make us to stumble and he might make us to slip by us yielding but we don't have to remain there. We come to God, confess to God our failure, ask him for forgiveness, and he will forgive you and give you grace to continue. He's not just going to abandon you and leave you there because you fall. No, he's going to pick you up and put you back in the right place. The meditation in this verse says, this is a command be ye holy as I am holy. This is a command and is indispensable. What does that word mean? It's absolutely necessary. It cannot be disregarded. Okay? It is indispensable as a characteristic of the blood-bought family. So as a member in this blood-bought family, it is completely it is, um, it is important for us to understand that we have to live a holy life. If we are children of God, it is only reasonable that we be like him. We know that our God is holy, is a holy God. This command did not originate with Peter's writings, for he referred to the command given to Moses, People were required to live holy under the law. So from the law was given, the Ten Commandments was given to Moses back in those years before Christ came. It was expected of God's people to be a separate people, a people that walked a different way, a people that God's favor was upon, and they were called to righteousness and holiness. And when that's why God made a provision for 
their sins by asking them to bring sacrifices, to sacrifice and the blood in making to the priests, bring it to the high priest, that he can sacrifice these um, animals and, in, and ask God on their behalf for their forgiveness of their sins. So you see, God made provision for them to live sinless. But if they sin, they had to come with sacrifices to present to God. Okay? But down through history, God had a perfect unveiling of his beautiful plan of salvation through his son, Jesus Christ. So now that's verse um, 16. Now verse 16 of 1 Peter 1 says, And if he call on the Father, who without respect of person, judgeth according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourn here in fear. It he that originates the peculiar family is truly the one true God, given justice to every man. And I'm thankful, and I'm sure you are too, that God is a just God. And he has no favorites. Sin is sin in the eyes of God. Whether you are rich, poor, black, or white, or any other color in between. God looks upon sin as sin. And there is no white sin like they talk about white lies. No. Sin is sin. So with whatever our sins are, God sees it as a sin. He's not partial. Every man's reward shall be according to his works. Therefore, it is necessary that we be very careful of our daily lives. So we should live carefully. Make it a point of duty to want to live in the will of God, to want to live to please God, to make sure that you, you, you reflect the family that you belong to. I mentioned earlier about my family and growing up and even now as, in the, as adults, they are faced with that because people who know their parents know the values that we establish in our lives and for our children and they're expecting even though there are adults now, for them to still have those virtues about them. So as Christians, we need to have those virtues of righteousness because we are in the family of God. Okay? We need to know that. And God is not partial. And let's continue. Verse 18, for as much as ye know that we were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by the tradition from your fathers. For as much as we know we are not redeemed with what? Corruptible things such as silver and gold, money, wealth, fame, prestige, doesn't cut it. God sees sin as sin, as I said earlier. And we cannot buy God with our money. We cannot buy God with our good works. We cannot buy God with our good looks or anything that we might think is valuable to you and important to you. Yes, you may sway that in the world to get your way through life, but when it comes down to the kingdom of God, the family of God, no, it's not going to work. You have to come through the blood-bought way, 
okay? And you have to line up with the holiness of God's requirement. So, the gold cannot buy favor with God. The world rides, sorry, the world relies upon its wealth to do the things it wants done. Money often, oft times, will save from the prison and the gallows. Even in sickness, money buys medical care that may prolong the span of life. But divine healing or the redemption of the soul cannot be purchased with gold or silver. Only the blood of Christ can save us from the power of sin and disease. Millions are living today by the vain handing down traditions of modern religion. But only the blood of Christ can save from this error. Yes, there are many people today that will say, well, you know, I grew up in this religion, or my father, my pet, my mother was of this religion, but they have not followed in that religion as they should, but still they have not yet found Christ as their Savior either. But they feel that they can draw from what the traditions of their family were or is. My friend, traditions of men, again, is not going to cut it. Not because my mother was of that religion or my father was of that religion. If that religion is not the true right religion of Jesus Christ, the Church of God, the blood-bought family that God, that Christ purchased with his blood, I'm sorry, it's not going to do us good. There is no other religion that is going to save us or no other salvation, let me put it that way, there is out there that is going to redeem us other than the blood of Jesus Christ. It is the blood of Jesus Christ that is going to save us, and we'll see that as we go down. Okay, yes, here it is. Verse 19, But with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot. So we just talked about the tradition of men and the corruptible things will not save us. What will save us? The precious blood of Christ as of the lamb without blemish and without spot. The blood is precious because it is the only thing that can redeem a poor soul from the power of sin. God required that we God required that he who would make a sacrifice to him must choose an animal that was perfect in every detail. This was back in the Mosaic dispensation and coming on up to Christ. Right? They had to choose a, a, a sacrifice that was without blemish in every detail. And listen. Likewise, in the one great sacrifice that the Father made, God gave His Son, Jesus Christ, who became that spotless Lamb for our redemption. So God made and He gave a sacrifice that was perfect in every detail. So it is through the precious blood of Jesus Christ that we become members of this blood-bought family. Okay? Through Jesus' blood. He spilled his blood. He gave himself for 
our sins so that we wouldn't have to go through all the ritual that they used to go through before and that we don't have to die and give our blood for our sins. Christ took that on. And all we have to do is come to him in penitence and accept, acknowledge to him our sins. Ask him to forgive us of our sins. And the blood that he shed will make atonement for our sins and cover our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then we are set free from our sins. And we will know when we're set free because when the Spirit does its work, it's going to leave you feeling different. Okay? Now, moving on. So it's the blood of Christ that saves us. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in these last times for you, for me. Who by him do believe in God, that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. So when we come to Christ and we accept him, we go through Christ and to God, to God, okay? Seeing we have purified our souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. So this is what happens now when we are redeemed. God gives us the ability to love where we couldn't love before because of our sinful and wretched life. And we have all malice and grudge against others. When we become redeemed by the blood of Christ, God gives you the ability, the power to love and to forgive, okay? Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is grass, is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withereth, and the flower therefore fadeth away. In other words, we are only here for a short time. Just like how the grass grows and it withers and dies. The same thing happens with our lives. We're here, we live, and we are going to die. And some of us go early. Some are blessed to have long life. But, you know, the important thing is, it's not how long you live, but it's how you live. What, is, what was your life like? living all those years. Whether it was a short life or a long life, was God included? Was God the leader of your life? Was he your father in this blood-bought family? That's the question you need to ask yourself. How am I living to please God? How am I living that if I should die tonight, how would I face God? Or today, how would I face God? Question yourself on that, please. Verse 25, But the word of the Lord endureth forever, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. The proceeding verses is the gospel that is preached unto you. We must be holy. We must be righteous. Okay? And we must follow God in his righteousness. Love our brothers and our sisters and humanity. Okay? And walk in righteousness. Now, our last scripture, Revelation 5 and 9 says, and they sung a new hymn, new song, saying, 
thou art worthy to take the book, speaking of Jesus, the, the Lamb of God, and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain, and has redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. So Christ came to shed his blood for the entire world that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Around the throne of God in eternity will be gathered men of every age and race. This shows the universal nature of the gospel of Christ. So wherever you are hearing, you are that you're hearing this message or this lesson today, we're teaching on the blood-bought family of God, part two. How one becomes a member of God's family and how we need to live to maintain our membership in that family. It is through holiness and doing the right thing. Okay? So Christ made it possible so that we can live righteous and that we can help others to come to Christ. And that is what this platform is for this morning. As we reach out through this Facebook, this Facebook page, teaching the Word of God, we invite you to come to God. Come through the blood of Jesus Christ, cleansing you from your sins, and be a member of God's holy family. God is relying entirely upon the testimony of the blood-bought family to extend the borders of his kingdom in the earth. The family is met by great opposition as we try to do this. But even so, there are many great advantages before us today, of which we should make the very greatest use. Such as I just mentioned a while ago, just through this Facebook page, through radio and through television, Every channel should be filled with the pure gospel of Christ. In eternity, our reward will be determined by the way we have used the opportunities before us. How will our generation compare with all others in devotion and service? We must not come short in anything. So we have a mandate. To herald the gospel, Jesus said, go ye into all the world and teach and spread the gospel to every creature, okay, to every person. So that's what we are trying to do here, is to help you understand the love of God and what it requires of you to be a member in God's beautiful family. May God bless you as we continue to study on the family of God. Next Sunday, we're going to be studying the peculiar family. We're going to dig a little deeper to show how peculiar this family is in God's sight. God bless you and have a great week. Father in heaven, again, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit helping me, dear Lord, to do the best I, I could with this lesson, dear Lord, and I pray, dear Lord, as those who listen, hear your word, dear Lord, that your Holy Spirit would speak to their hearts, dear Lord, and convince them of the truth of the gospel, of the only gospel that has power to keep us from sin, to redeem us and empower us to live above sin. So may they make themselves available, dear Lord, unto your forgiveness and your love and your grace, dear Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week.